Good morning. Bob Dylan's just <laughs> flogged his company for <laughs> the purported 300 million squid dollars or something, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, money is not the answer. Money is nothing. Money is an invention of mankind to exchange. Most people used to live in a barter economy. You work for someone and you brought them, they brought you around a chicken for your weekend <laughs> meal. <laughs> for instance. <clears throat> enough is enough. If only people would... Enough for our material well-being, fine, Christ fed, obviously, the 5,000 and the 4,000, and then stop. I come, my background is in South Africa. I was born there through British parents, but there we are. And the, the, the Khoisan people the, uh, from the Kalahari, the bush, bushmen they're called, but the Khoisan is a better, proper word to call them. Khoisan people. They've lived substantially. Uh, sustainably <clears throat> there in the whole of southern Africa. It's only the whites who turned up at Van Riebeck in 1652 and then black people came down from <sighs> what used to be called uh, Rhodesia but Zimbabwe which is the ancient civilization from the north and they wiped them out. The poor little people just living sustainably. They dream an animal over there and they'd run for it and run and run for days. I'd bring it back and then they would use the whole of that gift from God. They didn't know Christ. Obviously, 30, 40,000 years before Christ, the Khoisan people, the indigenous people of the whole of Southern Africa, as with the Aborigines of Australia, the indigenous American people, I mean, the Maori in New Zealand, I don't know, everywhere else too, indigenous peoples living sustainably in their environments, in the Amazon, in <coughs> Borneo, in the Philippines, I don't know, everywhere. <coughs> then, again, pointing the jolly old finger at jolly old Britain, England, came the Industrial Revolution through the 1800s. People tried to take over and rule the world. Actually, there was Napoleon too, wasn't there? A bit earlier. So the old froggies. Ah. <laughs> I'm probably not allowed to say that. If, if I were a BBC journalist, I would not uh, slap wrist for that. Moi, je parle français couramment. J'aime bien les français. I speak French too. Now, I'm going through my old journal, for what it's worth. Oh, I sort of kept it for over 10 years, more, I think. And I tend to chuck. The sort of bits I think, no, 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 not much to that. So anyway, I am a jealous God. Thou shalt have no other gods but me. Thus saith the Lord <coughs> in the Ten Commandments, as brought down from the mountain by Moses. <sighs> I've been having this discussion with a very old, well, sorry, I'm 64, an old friend for many years, um, a Staffordshire man who can read his <coughs> parents' Bible in uh, ancient Greek, etc., etc., but 
he's gone Buddhist. He's trying to nudge me down the Buddhist path. No, it's a dead end. I keep pointing him to John chapter 14, the Gospel of John, and Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one shall come to the Father but through me. This bloke, I mean, I can't say he's an ex-friend, but I just sent him back with a flea in his ear. He, he wrote to me saying, oh, well, perhaps Christ got it wrong. Oh, please. I try not to let him whine. <laughs> He's a bright bloke too. So, yes, okay, challenge me to challenge my position. Good, fine, I am a Christian. Come and challenge me then. I found, well, I don't like Facebook, but anyway, it's loads of people around. And um, <clears throat> I started the group, same as my site, Christian Broadcasting Palace. And there we are, there it is. <laughs> I've got two Facebook sites, um, somehow. Sending messages to myself. It's pathetic. That's the only person who watches my stuff is me on the other channel. <laughs> so what about Bob Dylan? What about all the poor babies dying now? <clears throat> there are three di waterborne diseases. I was in training as a medical doctor. I know that je connais les trois hommes à Paris qui avaient créé Médecins Sans Frontières. I know the three doctors in Paris who started Médecins Sans Frontières, the Doctors Without Borders. So typhoid, cholera, and dysentery are the waterborne killers. So if you don't have fresh, clean drinking water, never mind COVID, well before COVID, all of this stuff was going on. A mother has to watch its baby die, basically, because it, the mother, not this, the mother hasn't got the facilities to wash its baby's bum, I mean, to put it directly. Brilliant. <sighs> the die of diarrhea, um, the solution Literally, solution is a liter of fresh, clean drinking water, four tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, <coughs> sea salt if you can get it, it's got more chemicals in it, and that will rehydrate a baby given gently, probably teaspoonful by teaspoonful and save that little human life's life. Christ has been in the world for 2,000 years. <clears throat> now I submit myself to the will of God <clears throat> utterly. And if I become sad, I think, well, just how much worse the world would have been without Christ in the world. <clears throat> My personal, actual, real, daily cross that I bear, my personal problem is, what have I done to save this world? You know, to make the world a better place for my passing, for heaven's sake? I've been 
I dare say one would call it a privileged black black background. Middle class, lovely elderly gentlefolk parents, my mother and maternity sister, my dear old dad, an analytical chemist, nice home. We had a swimming pool out there in South Africa. <sighs> mother brought us back to England, nice public school education, minor public school. Uh, <sighs> Bristol University for medicine, me. Um, and then I've, I've always had sort of money in the bank and, you know, a home, good clothes. I used to have something like 50 pairs of foot. <laughs> I've given it all away now. I've only got one, all right? That's it. I've, I've got a boots in the cupboard. But otherwise, I've just got that old pair of boots and bare feet. Fine. I don't need loads of material stuff. It just doesn't interest me. I feel almost that I've got too much. I mean, relative to two thirds of the world's population, I've got everything. I've got fresh, clean drinking water. All I have to do is turn on the tap. I know I can drink it and it won't kill me. Bang, how about that? Oh dear. Have my Bible. <laughs> it's getting a bit rusty. That's my guide to life. And I'm here. My son's dead, there he is on the wall. Last picture I had of him when he was about 10 from my former wife, etc. I won't go into that story. Robert Francis was his name. Is his name, rather. He committed suicide at the age of 18. He would be 28 now. That's my personal cross, my personal sorrow. Well, okay, that is the path God has given me. That is my cross to bear. So I know about personal suffering, thank you. Good. Right. <laughs> this page. Now, if it'll show. Right. At the top are the three passages, um, a lamp on a stand. So Matthew chapter five, verses 13 to 16, salt and light. Mark chapter four, verses 21 to 25, a lamp on a stand. And Luke chapters 11 and eight. Um, 30, 11 is 33 to 36, the lamp of the body. And chapter eight, uh, 16 to 18, a lamp on a stand, you see. That's what I'm trying to do. A lamp on a stand. It's not <laughs> hidden in a bowl under the bed. All right. Here it is, on a stand. Old Francis bleating on again. <laughs> no one's listening, obviously. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs>